You are losing shots with your short game if your wedges are not properly gapped. And today, Master Club Fitter Kevin Kraft is here with us to give us a demonstration of what proper gapping with your wedges looks like. Golfers, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and then tell us in the comments how you have properly gapped your wedges. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf, joined here today by Kevin Kraft, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing Columbia in the Twin Cities today. And today's about short game, gapping in particular. And so a lot, another topic that uh, I know, when you talk to like Larry Bobka, and I imagine you feel the same way, right? The wedges, or your scoring clubs, this is Absolutely. where you, you know, make those, turn those pars into birdies, or this is where you turn <laughs> those bogeys maybe into pars, is with the wedges. And uh, the best way to do that is to have them properly gapped. And so this means not having a gap of, say, 10 degrees between your pitching wedge and your gap wedge. Correct. So uh, talk to us, Kevin, about A, why that, I mean, a little bit more on why that's important, why the gapping on your wedges is important, but also kind of how you would go through a gapping session. Okay, so um, each of these pieces of equipment is a, it's a tool. Mm -hmm. We're using it for a specific purpose. And mm -hmm. as such, that purpose is yardage. And we want to make sure that we a know what that yardage is and then b have all those yardages covered mm -hmm. right so uh, the amount of loft separation between pitching wedge and a gap wedge gap wedge and a sandwich sandwich and a lob wedge for those that carry a lob wedge is important those with faster club head speeds may not need even four degrees Right. difference those with slower club head speeds might need five or six degrees to to have a proper uh gapping so mm -hmm. that they don't have two clubs doing the exact same thing or two clubs that are doing so much of a different thing that they're out there with yeah they're just guessing got, yeah they're lost well they're also lost to the yardage right yeah. i don't want anybody in any part of the, the their bag to be out on the golf course with well i don't have a club for that yeah i wouldn't right. have done my job very well if, right. if that was the case so um you said green light clubs, 100%, mm -hmm. right? These are the clubs that we should be attacking the pins with. We need to know that we've got all those yardages, 120 yards in, covered. Yeah, yeah. Right. right, exactly. And then even for some players, you know, they might have, whether they use maybe the same wedge in, in from, say, 60, 70 mm -hmm. yards, whatever it might be. Yeah. But when you have a comfortable, short club in your hand, yep. and you're, like you said, you're going after the flag, you got to yep. know and have a good feel for that club in particular is going to be good for that particular yardage. Yeah. So with this today, we're going to kind of show a little bit of a gapping session and what that might look like if you come into second swing and you're looking at a new set of wedges, but it's not just about the model or the, the grooves or the spin. It's about making sure the distances are right. So the first step we've got here is already recorded, right? We've mm -hmm. got some swings up there with a pitching wedge from yep. Kevin. So um, with that, you were carrying the ball about 125, 126 yards, yeah. a little extra, a couple of yards in total. But that's mm -hmm. essentially, for a lot of players, I imagine, too, a pitching wedge is probably about a 125, 120 yeah, in there. So, so yeah. um, with that said, the next few steps then is basically getting the rest of that bag filled out yep. with clubs under that yardage um, that match up perfectly for that player. Yes. And part of the conversation that we have to have with anybody coming in is where are you comfortable swinging with a, with a wedge do you like to swing hard at a wedge do you really not like to swing hard at a wedge what kinds of shots are you trying to hit um you know that's that's one of those one of those really important ones too because if you got somebody that's really comfortable taking something off of a pitching wedge mm -hmm. you know their need may not be to push right up you know at a 10 to 12 yard gap. They may right. be more comfortable, you know, going 15, 20, especially that guy maybe that doesn't carry a lob wedge, carries pitching wedge, gap wedge, and just a sand wedge. Yeah. He's probably that guy that's got some really good touch, you know, can kind of fillet that shot in there a little bit, right. take something mm -hmm. off of it. I'm not usually that good with that, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm better swinging hard, but um, it is in the wedges where I've had to train myself to take something off of it. Yeah. There's, we're only allowed 14 clubs, right. so I can't have, you know, exactly, you know, 10 yards on everything. Right. So, right. Yeah. And so one other thing to keep in mind, too, is we have to understand, like, the pitching wedges have gotten stronger in loft. Too. Oh, yes. So yep. that's another piece yep, of this yep. where really the, the gap wedge has become a more common piece of the bag because a lot of times in the past, maybe with older sets where the pitching wedge was like 47 degrees, 48 degrees, you could go straight to a, say, 54 degree sand yeah. wedge. Um, and 
you didn't need a gap wedge. But now basically every iron set requires it's, a gap wedge because of these pitching wedges becoming stronger and longer. Yeah, it's pretty well essential now with, yeah. with the lofts that have gotten stronger. Um, you know, even in even in some of the players' irons, you look at the new yeah. uh, Cobra King tours, they come a couple degrees strong to to that players' club standard. Yeah. They're seven irons, thirty two or thirty four would be normal. Well, pitching wedge there's gonna be forty four degrees. That creates a bigger gap that mm -hmm. then needs to be filled. And whether we want to go 48 degrees or 49 degrees or 50 degrees, we're probably not going 52 degrees most of the time. Right. 52 to me is kind of a... It's a weak gap wedge nowadays. It, it is. It yeah. really is. And in some cases, it's somebody's sand wedge now. Right. Um, I've pushed into 52, 53 as my next club. I'm mm -hmm. now back at 54, but um, I've experimented some with that a little bit stronger. But then it comes down to what kind of shots are we going to play around the right. green with it? So yeah. uh, there's going to be a lot of back and forth with with any customer that comes in. How are you playing your shots? What do you want to do with it? Where are you comfortable? What do we need mm -hmm. to accomplish? So today you've we hit the pitching wedge already. We've mm -hmm. got the numbers for that. So the next step then in a gapping session is that going to be finding a maybe it's a 50 degree wedge and seeing where that lines up. Yeah, I'd probably I'd probably start with a 50 okay. uh, and see where that goes. If we need a little bit more, obviously we can either bend that 50 a little bit if we're not you know negatively influencing the bounce numbers. Yeah, and we don't want to hurt turf interaction, or we could go down to a 48 and if yeah. we need to you know make that 48, 49 to get a little more bounce we can do sure. that lots of things we can do to manipulate wedges every wedge i've ever owned has been manipulated to get exactly what i need out of it so don't ever hesitate to say hey i need a little bit of this or a little bit of that um, one of the great things that we do for everybody is we will adjust your loss and lines as long as you own the equipment there so you go. Uh, don't hesitate if you're not getting exactly what you want bring it in and we can make sure that you're getting that perfect perfect well let's go grab a 50 degree let's okay. hit a few swings and then we'll kind of work our way down cool get this out That was up high on the screen. Yep. There we go. That was better. There's a good swing. That was better. I'm thinking about 115 is going to be this 50 degree number. That's about what I'd want it to be. Okay. All right. I can deal with that. The uh, the 50 degree wedge we find well, about a 10 yard difference overall. Yeah. Uh, so is that, I guess when you're fitting somebody and they're going through this, is a 10 yard difference, is that pretty good? Or maybe 10, you wanna go 10, a little weaker 10 to than 15, that? Yeah, okay. I, I personally, I play about 15 yards between, okay. uh, but again, it comes down to, what the individual is, is looking for and what they're what their comfort with. Right, you know, right, okay. With. So in this instance, I guess that would be on the border of almost too close together. It's close, yeah. it's, it's definitely close. Okay. Um, okay. I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't push any closer than that. Okay. You know, with, with what yeah, it is, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I mean, it does, I mean, it's, yeah, like it's about 10 yards of difference. Mm -hmm. um, so then the next club, you kind of want it to be closer to a, like 105 probably? Yeah, I would I say, imagine. well, 105, 100 to 105 maybe, because if if we're if we're gonna make any adjustment to that exact setup, yeah, it's gonna be making that that 50 degree a little bit weaker. Yeah, maybe moving Probably. it to 51 if you yeah. need to. Okay. And who knows? I didn't actually uh, I didn't actually measure that, so it it, it it says 50. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It could be lying to us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. Just trying to scale that that back just a little bit, okay. just to widen it out. So probably around a hundred is going to be okay. what I'm going to want to see from the ne okay. from that next. Okay. So one. do we have what's the next loss we have? So then? I've got a four. I've actually got a fifty six. Fifty six. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Again, this is going to kind of come down to what somebody wants, whether they want uh, and what the what their shots are going to be around the green. Yeah, yeah. You know, if they're if there's somebody that stops at 50 uh, at, at, a, at a sand wedge, mm -hmm. having that 56 is going to be important, I right. think, because you want to have that loft to be able yeah, to get right, high right. And, and soft, right? 54 gets a little dicey. Yeah, when for you're, most players, when you're 54 that. is not quite enough loft to yeah. be the, I guess, the highest lofted yeah. wedge. It's certainly know. not, certainly not enough loft to be the highest lofted wedge, um, if if they're 
really dominant with that with that golf club, right? Yeah. If, if they use it for everything right. around the green. Right. So um, I don't often try to talk people into getting a lob wedge. It's one of those things that kind of has to ap- happen organically. Mm-hmm. Um, Within the conversation, I'm sure you kind of find out enough about the way that they use their wedges. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And you'd be surprised the number of people that say, I just don't ever hit the 60. I don't know what to do with it. Okay, Yeah. cool. Well, that's, and that's another that's case fine. too. We did another gapping video on long game. Maybe you take the 60 out if you don't use it. Yeah, exactly. And add another hybrid or a five wood or seven wood. Absolutely. You know? let's, so. let's cover it. Let's, let's have everything have a purpose and, right. and cover all your yardages. Yeah. Okay. So 56 degree. Again, hopefully for about 100, 100 yards here. All right. 96. Okay. Okay. This one's going to be pretty consistent. Ah, a little right. tuggy. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, barely, right? Yeah. So, no, it's okay. It's, but it's a little pull. But okay. That's all right. So we are seeing potentially some need to change here, and it makes sense because the pitching wedge in that. So you grabbed a, a Z785 yep. uh, pitching wedge. Yeah. And at stock, that one is 46 degrees. Okay. So. Yeah. We're kind of seeing where potentially moving this 50 degree to a 51 degree yeah. um, would make a lot of sense. Probably bring it back another three to four yards. Correct. And then all of a sudden you have kind of really that 12 to 15 yards between each club. Perfect. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be absolutely perfect. So then at this point, you have pitching wedge, you have 51, you have 56. And then really you kind of think it's up to the player after that. Yeah. If they want a 60 or 61 yep. or if they want to kind of use an extra club at the top end of the bag for gapping purposes. Yeah, and I, you know, if somebody's gonna go into a lob wedge, I want the, I want that lob wedge to be a really good utility club for them. Yeah. I want them to be able to be confident standing over it to swing it full, because it can be very much an asset on full swings. But also, you know, if you're, if you got a golf course where the greens are elevated, creating lofts gonna be really, really important. If you've got bunkers to go over, creating lofts gonna be really, really important. I'm like a broken record. I always say that yeah. creating loft is really, really important, but it is, right? Yeah. So with all the golf clubs, it's really important. So that 60 degree can give people another option for trying to go higher and softer. Yeah. But if you're not comfortable with it and you're you're more comfortable manipulating a 56 degree wedge, by all means, let's let's play to our strengths, right? Mm-hmm. We don't we don't have to push something in there just because it fits. It's got to fit you know, the, the personal makeup as much as it right. does the bag makeup. Right. So in this case, let's say, you know, I guess as a fitter, are you comfortable with someone's kind of shortest full swing club being a 97 yard shot? Or would you want someone to yeah, have a full as, swing that's shorter? You know, as long as they're, as, as long as they're good with, with taking something off of it. Okay. Right? I mean, that's, I didn't know if there was a, a best practice out there, right. For having maybe a full swing at like 80 yards or you so, know, whatever it might be. You know, I mean, it's, again, it's, it's how comfortable is somebody, right. you know, I, I like to call it filleting a shot or finessing yeah. a shot in there, opening up the club face. Right. One of the reasons why we talk about grinds when we talk about wedges is the ability to manipulate a golf club better, right? Right. Uh, so something with a grind on a on a 56 degree wedge will allow allow them to open that club face mm-hmm. up, create more of a 60 degree yeah. uh, wedge for those without harming shots. the delivery right, of the club. Right. Exactly. Or, okay. Exactly. Well, in this case, then we don't really need to hit any more clubs because at well, that no. point, the 60 or 61 degree wedge is ultimately up to the player and if they want to have Correct. that extra loft option in the bag or if they want to have an extra hybrid utility or yeah. seven would maybe up there at the top. But um, ultimately here we accomplished basically what we wanted, right? We would just probably adjust that 50 degree up a yeah, little sca- bit, a little bit higher just a little bit. We just got a little too much out of it. It's, uh, right. There are some, some wedges out there that are pretty fast paced. That happens to be one. Yeah, yeah so, I suppose, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. But uh, all right, Kevin, thanks, man. I mean, sure. this was, I think, a really cool look into the gapping process because a lot of golfers, again, might not be totally thinking of this aspect of their set pitching wedge down to their wedges. So yep. um, really good stuff here. I think yeah. a lot of golfers will learn. Such, a such an important this. component, mm-hmm. right? The, anytime we're looking at the scoring clubs, we got to get this stuff dialed in just oh, right. For so, sure. so go go get fit. Go get fit. Get, like a good, get a good gapping session. We'll figure it out for you.